you know, you know, in other words, they did some test, you have to guess that. And he did not come out. But the niggas, the TV niggas, they don't pay no attention to that. They don't run in their mouth, yeah, man. We come to give a speech, and he was high and heavy. They didn't know nothing about it. They didn't know nothing about what movement producing people. You know what I mean? And why you want me to speak? Why are you chasing me down? You know what I mean? Are you trying to set me up? They didn't know none of that. They didn't understand it because they was police niggas. That's why when they pop up on the TV talking about the side of their black mouths, it don't mean nothing to me. But we can rescue a certain amount of the people from all of that foolishness. We can rescue a certain amount of people from all the fitna and misguided that's going on in the world today and in our neighborhood. Right? So <clears throat> that's what been coming to me since <clears throat> this week because what we teach is simple to us, but when other people hear it, like the brother I was, they, what is that? What is that? And then, the way I was acting this Friday, I know they just stopped, wait just a minute. This is Saturday Night Live at the Masjid, a Friday day, right? Because remember what I'm telling them about the people messing with my door the other night? So all I did, this is just, so, so I show these the niggas, I, I didn't say I should, I show these the brothers. So, remember the, we had that, what's the name of the refrigerator for, uh, uh, French toast and all that, right? Right. So, last week we had French toast and potatoes and all that, and so, so I took some of it home. So <laughs> that thing was hitting on the door. So I uh, oh, yeah. so, open up this door like you got a right. You know, my chin is closed, you got to get up out of it, whatever you're doing. Uh, so I sprayed <laughs> that white foam, you know, a little bit on my head. Some on my hand. So I opened the door real quick. Nigga Pox, run! And it's still running right now, you know. I'm just acting. I'm just having fun. I got this acting. I got the black. They say it a lot of people. They, they call it the monkey pox. <laughs> so that's what I was saying. Oh, my, come on. Monkey pox. And, you know, when you open the door real quick, all they can see. You know what I mean? They can turn off the lights inside. There's a little light on the front porch, and they can see all that foam. Oh, yeah. so, well, anyway, you got to remember the people have no, when you take humor out of your life, well, when you came to see me in the hospital, I couldn't talk at all. I didn't know what day it was. After a while, I started cheating at the hospital. You know why? They asked you, what's your name? So I looked on the board. They got the board right there, right, with your name. Where are you at? I'm a GW. Because it's all written. But I would, you know, when you, those head injuries, until you start recovering, you, it's, you don't know. I couldn't pray for a long time because I didn't remember how to pray. Right? But all I said, remember what was I saying down there? Optimism. 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 That's it. I didn't know nothing else but that. Don't worry about a thing. Optimism. And that's what's now. And I'll go back. With all this stuff, what we started and where we're going, 
it's not only the Negro, but it's the world. Now, you know what I mean? At that time, our focus was our people, but now it's the world gone straight. And as optimistic, optimistic as I am, I don't see no way out for them. And since we tagging along with them, I don't see no way out for the world. I don't see it. If somebody can see it, uh, let me know. For economy, that means economy, we don't know how much time the U.S. economy has left. And another thing that people don't know if they live in the United States, if you're outside the United States, especially if you live in illegal things, everybody saved their money in U.S. dollars. And the United States Treasury estimates every year how much money is outside. Now you take all of Latin America, you take Iran, you take everywhere. Up until recently, everybody saved their money, not in pesos, but they changed them to U.S. dollars. That, the most fluid country of uh, uh, currency in the world. And they know that. So every year they make an estimate and they print that much money that's in Colombia, Bolivia, Ecuador, El Salvador, Iran, all the world. They make an estimate and they print a little bit less of that amount of money that they estimated that people have kept out over there. And they've been doing it every year for decades. So I want you to just imagine next year or the year after that, when the U.S. dollars start plunging, which they're, they're making it, you're going to have to, dollar, you're going to have to plunge because they're messing with everybody. So what's Russia, what's China doing? You know, if it was just messing with somebody on the block, that'd be one thing. But they're messing with the biggest and the baddest, the Chinese economy, the Russian military. And look how well Iran has done under all of these sanctions. And now they are old stooges and bums, Saudi Arabia. What are they doing now? They're acting funny, right? With them. Not with us. They're, okay, just quick imagination. When a U.S. dollar starts to slide, what's everybody around the world going to do? What's that going to do? A hundred dollars will be worth two dollars. Maximum. Maximum. The best thing to have at that time is, of course, property, stuff like that. And gold. So we have what it says we're going to thank the law for giving us some insight into the working thing. Now that's you, sir. And since boss men are not going to put us over the storehouses, we have to choose a lot of our own space here in America right now. That starts with going back to the youth. And they don't have a chance, when you see how some of the youth respond here, they have never hearing anything that's relative to their life. When they go to them beside them, with their pants all up in the air, and we're not gonna talk about them people. That's a waste of time. We're going to talk to our people. That's the great message of this last, this last year, over this last few weeks, is where, because uh, that's what we've been working on, where are we going in this next recent period? Uh, and that's where we're headed with a lot of help. And so, uh, I'll just kind of wrap it up. In the next period, We'll be going uh, around the country and doing more fundraising because we have things that we have to do 
but that fundraise will get us uh, stabilized so we can uh, go on to the next step. We'll turn uh, 4481 into our, what we always would be, a, a research center, you know. And so uh, certain copiers, we need to do stuff like we'll be because that stuff is not that. Uh, we need a better Dell copier, you know, the big old black ones that they, we used to have down there. I don't remember. Yeah, I remember. Boy, they yeah, really copy good. Yeah, we did. They I, I really still have one. I still have one. Huh? I still have one. Man, them things. Does yours copy good and clear? And mm -hmm. man, yeah. they they make it like a second like picture. Yeah, they don't make that one anymore. But they they, they don't make that one. one. Is yours almost that good? It's that same one that we had in here. It's the exact same one. Oh, okay. Yeah, the big one. The yeah, the big one. black one. Oh, the one yeah. that yeah. you had here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it still works kind of like the no, same? Still, uh, yeah, some of the parts don't work anymore, but for the, it still prints good and, and you know. Prints good, but yeah. what about pictures with it? Uh, yeah, I don't do the volume that we would do here. Huh? I don't do the volume, like, you know okay. what I mean? But do it, and how do they come out? They come out well. Okay, yeah, anyway, we we'll worry about it. Out. Yeah, yeah. Those are details. Yeah, we got to get another one. The out. point we're making is, we're going back to reaching out uh, to uh, the people need reaching out to, which includes the youth and also the, the, the fat cats that are very, uh, I find the Muslims are really uh, upset, nervous, scared, uh, all kinds of stuff nowadays, okay? So our mission is to break out from this isolation and help the, uh, the Muslims. You know, help the Muslims, help the people in the community, and uh, you know, back to our, our original mission. And uh, that's what's been working over the last few days. So. Uh, for the next week, we'll be uh, putting our ideas together and planning our next steps. But that's what it looks like. Now we're using all the property we've acquired for the specific reasons that we acquired it for, or what we changed our mind and so forth, and so that would be uh, that will be the move. But soon we'll be getting around the country raising funds. Although we've been getting a lot of calls from the people wanting to put us on the, the, the TV stuff about fundraising. I know who they're from. That's the way they, they're trying to smoke a peace pipe with us. But if See, if they know you're going to get around the country, they'll do that to slow you down, you know. Just like if they knew I was coming to South Africa to raise funds, which I would have done very well, they invited us to South Africa to raise funds for them. I don't know where I go. Okay. That's the last time I went. That was, that was a scam. That's what they was, uh, you know, because uh, anyway, they weren't mad, but the, Dr. Khalid Siddiqui had said what he said about me, and there was thousands of South Africans listening to it. Several thousand of them were very happy. That's just what we did here. But there's another few thousand mixed with the ones from here and in Canada. Didn't want to hear that. Yep. And when Dr. Khalid Siddiqui was buried in London, they didn't even invite me to come around because of that stuff. It's no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Uh, so, are there any questions or comments? Excuse me for just uh, rambling a little bit, but that's what's on the thing, the chessboard for the recent period. 
and we're going to try to get around the country in a hurry before the winter sets in. So September is nice. October is nice. In fact, one of the nicest days in the year is October 16th. For D.C., October 16th or October 15th. You know, this is why they always have a demonstration here at that time. Why? Because it says 75 degrees, no rain. Perfect for a demonstration because you won't burn up and drop dead. Right? You know, they got calendars of what are the best days of the year. For D.C., October 16th or 15th. What? It's a 90% chance it's going to be between 75 and 76 degrees. You can be outside in the weather and you won't have a problem. But on November the 16th, you're going to freeze to death, possibly. Right? So they know, they got all this stuff, and now with computers, they got all that stuff. So we know America, we get around, we'll do a little bit more work here, and then we'll get out and hit the road. So we can be on the road in September. In California, it won't be bad, because that's the hottest month of the year. I mean, you know, in September, when school starts, even for Oakland, it would be you know, hot, it would be real hot. But for the rest of the U.S., September is nice. And for here, September is perfect. Right? Low humidity, it's almost perfect anyway. And October also. So, we're going to start getting our funds together and, uh, and going back to work. Uh, to us, okay, I say to me, to me this is a good period. This is a reformulation of the, of the mission and every time you're on a, a long range stretch, you, you have to refocus sometime on your mission and goals. You know, you have to go back and say, are, where are we at according to where we want it to be? Are we on the same trajectory? Are we where, you know what I mean? You have to reanalyze and refocus, right? And also recommit. So it's really like a rejuvenation because that's what we're going through as an organization. And it's also an optimistic period, very optimistic period, you know. Because when you get ready to roll, you got to be out and master. We're going to administrate it. I'm going to do some of that. Right? So it's a good time. Excuse me for rambling, but I tried to put it. The thoughts are still coming. But that's the basic idea. Revival, rejuvenation, refocus, and, and <laughs> analyze where we are and according to where we've been trying to go. What do we have to do to readjust and uh, how will we act with other people? So I feel with the other people like the Alhidra and all other places that we'll be all right this time around. I anticipate the only people that would be openly against us is some we mentioned already because we're going after their kids too. And they're, they're sad as we are about where their children are right now. You know, you can see from the programs they have. You know. So uh, anyway, uh, an attitude we'll have is the same basic attitude we had uh, during the Jumbo Kutpa. Open, optimistic, and looking on the bright side of everything. And I know those youngsters, you can see it in their eyes. <laughs> is this a dog? Is this a crowd? Uh, Friday Night Live at the question. You know, I mean, something like that. They was thinking, but is it the University of D.C.? I mean, because of the concepts, the idea, which are just normal us. 
But if you notice the accent, but, well, what is such and such? Right? What is paradigm shift? They well, what is paradigm shift? Right. Well, I'm sure they never heard of paradigm shift. That's right. What is that road map? You know, when you come to the state, I used to look at the road map, trying how to get places, and then I know where I'm at. So when it's come time for you to make a move, it's called a paradigm shift. So, but you have your stationary point where you at, you know your location, right? So paradigm shift in business, paradigm shift in everything, right? When you change your mind, you change, when you change your mind and your picture of who you are, that's what you're telling them. They telling you you're a dumb nigga and they ain't never been able to do nothing, they ain't gonna do nothing. When you change that, that's going to change the paradigm. That's going to change the whole roadmap. That's going to change the whole scheme of who you are, where you are, and what your abilities are, right? That's right. And that's what we have to get back to. The, the Negroes that stole all the youth that they filled them full of poison, and that they, they would be luckier to shoot themselves in the head and fill this on a day that day and to fill their brains up with the stuff that, that they're hearing. It don't make no sense. It don't do you no good. If you did everything they say, you, you wouldn't be doing no good at all. I had any questions I could make to this. Uh, I wanted to. Uh, so these are the types of uh, flyers and stuff that we'll be redoing. Uh, Islam, the true liberation, you know, not black liberation, but Islam, the true liberation. And all the good stuff, solidarity and hidayah, stuff we did with others and other movements. And, uh, but now it's not done from a thing of isolation. We're working to be in harmony with the Dar al Hitras and this and that, is even, uh, the Masjid Muhammad said it makes no difference. All the Muslims, anybody doing anything positive, we want to get involved in that. Are there any questions about anything that we've been talking about so far? Did it make any sense? Of course it made sense yeah. because it's something that's needed. And, uh, you know, it's something that you've always talked about. You just mentioned refocusing, you know. That, what our goals were and still are. Yeah. So, you know. Well, you have to do that. I mean, anytime you 